So it says that this is the most technical stage seven of the Via Valle. You can see I've just come from the refuge back there. And then this <laughs> is the trail, believe it or not, up there. So some good news, I thought it was gonna go up there, but it turns out we've got these uh, handrails to help us up this bit here. You can say that this is not for the faint hearted. have deteriorated uh, you can just about see the trail what is really useful is all the little piles of stones that people have put along the way because you can't see the way markers but you can see then and I can see that someone came this way downhill yesterday which has just helped defi define the trail <laughs> a bit I'm not gonna lie, this is very hard work. I've been going down through thigh deep powder, hard to see the path. Can't tell you how pleased I am to see that. You can just make it out. It's not really a whiteout, but it's snowing. I'm in a bit of shade here, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty tough. I've been going for about two hours so far and uh, I don't know, maybe I'm half an hour from the summit. I've reached the summit, 3,300 metres and uh, uh, sadly I've got a sensibly I've made a decision I'm going to turn around. You can perhaps see the, uh, the marker there and there's a steel rope which you would normally go down and down there you might be able to see some ladders but the cornice is built up on the ridge there and I sort of tried to dig out the chain but it's just too deep and it, it doesn't look safe so having made it all the way up here I'm now going to have to go back but it's the right decision you know it's very very unusual conditions for July uh, but there you go let's turn around just uh, thinking uh, if anyone's following my uh, my journey to UTMB a little while ago I did a coastal path walk in the UK and I remember saying at the time I oh, was just hoping to get a bit of discomfort from it you know just to get used to that sort of thing I mean uh, there's absolutely no comparison with this I've had you know shin knee thigh deep snow driving hail this this kind of stuff here with a little layer of snow on top of it or water on top of it is lethal uh, yeah I mean you know psychologically it couldn't be uh, better training so um, I'm almost back at the uh, refuge again and uh, it's a strange thing I mean to a certain degree I haven't completed what I wanted to do today but what I did do was make a lot of really good decisions. Uh, firstly, I wore two layers because I thought it might be cold at 3,300 meters, and it was. <laughs> Secondly, I changed my gloves from my thin ones to my thicker waterproof ones at a good point. Also another really good decision. Thirdly, I had a, like a gel at one point and some, uh, some blocks at one point. And I did that when I was feeling pretty negative. And as Dave Scott, the uh, Ironman triathlete used to say, if you're feeling good, smile. And if you're feeling bad, eat. And the fourth good decision I made was to turn around. Because 
it was pretty hard getting up there like it was thigh deep snow in places but uh you know getting to the col itself was just one point going down on the other side there on this stage seven where you're going down uh, to ladders there was a cornice on the uh, top there i started to try and dig to get the uh the kind of iron uh rope that's there um and it was it was deep and looking at it from the side it looked to me as if there could have been two meters of snow sitting on that cornice and while possibly i could have dug my way through and channeled the path it became apparent pretty quickly that that would have taken a very long time and going over the edge with that much snow above you even if it was just on the lip you know, it could have been enough to kind of pull me down uh, with it so that my final decision to turn around was the best one I've made today.